All right, YouTube, what's going on? It's Frank Nitty with another Monday recap. We're going to talk about the Packers' loss to the undefeated Rams yesterday. I apologize for not recapping in the 49ers game a, few, a couple of weeks ago. I just completely forgot for some reason, but I'm back. Here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about this game. <laughs> right off the bat, the Packers did what they needed to do, and that was come out playing fast and feeding the ball to Aaron Jones. Uh, his first carry went for 15 yards. I was really uh, pleased. I per se, I was definitely pleased by how we came out and looked to start the game. The drive ended up stalling, but I did think that first drive let everyone know the Packers could move the football on the Rams' defense. I'm really pleased with the Packers' defense, the way they played to start the game as well. And they were they were getting they were getting a lot of pressure on Jared Goff. Well, we were making some good stops on Ty Gurley, keeping him from breaking away any big runs and disrupting the pass, especially from Jair Alexander. He had a great game. Uh, the officiating in this game wasn't very good. I guess they were just allowing these guys to just play and be a little bit more physical, but there was some blatant holes that the referees just did not call. So, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't have that much to add to it. But, yeah, I think that the officiating could have been definitely better. The, uh, the Rams at one point went for a fake pass, a fake punt pass to Sam Shields, which was successful. But the Packers defense stepped up again and made a stop. So at this point, the Packers were up 10-0 on the Rams, and the defense was playing well But at that point, but the momentum quickly shifted. When after that, after that ensuing stop, after the fake punt, punt by the Rams, they, they punted the ball again and downed the Packers inside the one-yard line. Now before this, the Packers' last two drives completely stalled because of these, at these exact reasons. We were pinned down deep in our own territory, but this was the worst situation. They pointed the ball, and Sam Shields did a great job pinning the ball on the one-yard line. So the Packers had to, had, to, had to obviously play from the one. And the first play we come out there, the Packers decided to run the ball with Aaron Jones, but he's quickly met from a missed block, I think, by, uh, by Brian Belago or somebody, I believe. And the Rams get the safety. So before this point, the Rams' offense wasn't doing much. The Packers, other than that one drive to get a touchdown, wasn't doing much either. So that's the reason why the score looked the way it did before the safety. But after that safety, you quickly saw how the, the momentum shifted quickly in the favor of the Rams. Sure enough, they would score a touchdown off that and tied the game on a two-point conversion to Ty Gurley. And what can you say? That, that guy is just unbelievable. He made some really great plays in this game. Second half, the Rams came out punted after a quick three and out. The Packers would drive down and set up for a field goal, and the Rams' next two possessions ended a touchdown to go up two scores. And at this point, I was kind of ready to just throw in a towel because credit to the Rams' defense. They had been slowing us down and not allowing much after that one touchdown drive. The Packers instead came out and answered right back with a beautiful bomb downfield at Devontae Adams, followed by a touchdown run by Aaron Jones who finished the game overall with just a measly 12 carries for 86 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 7.2 yards a carry. But remember, guys, balance. Nobody nobody else had over 10 yards rushing. Anyway, after the Rams' field goal, the Packers would score another touchdown to Valdez Scantley, who who has a lot of potential, man. That guy, I hope, I hope he gets more playing time, even with Geronimo and Cobb back healthy. That would be... If, if he, I'm telling you, he has a lot of potential, man. He can easily emerge as a, as a really good, reliable option. He has a lot of breakaway speed and has some good hands. I definitely hope he keeps getting more playing time. But that will be the last touchdown of the game. So the Packers, at that, after that, had a 27 to 26 lead. We make us, we stop the Rams again on the next possession, and then here, and here's where it really started to fuck up for us. If I get to the, the biggest fuck up. This drive was also a fuck up because it was about five minutes left in the game. The Rams only had one timeout and we had the lead. So common sense would tell Mike McCarthy to run the ball on first and second down to kill some clock and make them waste their last timeout, right? But no, in another Mike McCarthy special, he calls a pass play on first down that was incomplete and I'm just screaming at the TV when that happened. Mike McCarthy in this play calling is such a problem that people just don't point out enough. Okay, and I've and I've done nothing to point out this entire time. Be recapping, I've been recapping the Packers since the season started. His terrible play calling and clock management is a problem. Okay, it's a problem. And people and fans and sports analysis, they just don't for some reason do not point this out. And Mike McCarthy just continues continually escapes the electric chair because of this reason. This was this was dumb. That whole this whole final drive of the Packers was terrible, pitiful. 
The Rams only have one timeout left. Run the fucking ball, Mike. Aaron Jones is averaging 7.2 yards a carry. Run the damn ball. First and second down. Run the ball. Try to kill some clock. Make a waste and burn that last time out. But no, let's go ahead and throw the ball on first down. Then we run the ball on second. And then it fucking get and Rodgers gets sacked on third down to give them the ball back. So that so after that sack, that would have been the Packers last time touching the fucking football. The Rams next drive, we we were able to stop them and hold them to a field goal. So now they, they, it's 27 to 21. All the Packers need is to get down in the field goal range and maybe get a game-winning field goal or even a touchdown if that's what they wanted to do. So we still have one timeout left for us. Still, we had we had one timeout left as well. Over two minutes left to go in the game, so we still had one timeout and a two-minute warning. And all Aaron Rodgers needs is just get the ball back. And then it happened. The Rams kicked the ball off. Tom Montgomery decides to take the ball out of the end zone for some reason. And when he did that, I'm just looking at him. I'm just like, what are you doing, Ty? I said that. That was that was that was exact my exact words. When he took the ball out of the end zone, I said, What are you doing, Ty? What are you doing? And sure enough, he fumbles the ball. <clears throat> unreal, man. Just unreal. He fumbles the football after stupidly taking the ball out of the end zone. And the Rams get the ball back and run out the clock. Just unfucking believable, man. Ty Montgomery, I don't know what the fuck was going through his head. But he's got to go. He, he's got to go. You don't, you don't make dumb decisions like that in crunch time. When the game is on the line, why would you make a decision like that when you got Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback? It makes no sense. And mind you, this wasn't the only time that, t- that Tom McGurry fucked up. There was one drive where he, he missed a blatant block assignment. That led to Rodgers getting sacked and we had to put the football. So he was not having a good game. So whoever's decision it was to, to, to leave him back there to return the kicks, dumb. Dumb. And, and, and it's not the only time that Tom Montgomery's fumble on a kickoff return. He's fumbled before. He's had a, he's had a few fumbles actually on kick returns. But we still got him returning kicks. Why? So because of that fumble, Rogers, Aaron Rodgers once again is screwed out of a possibility of getting a game-winning drive because of the incompetence of his teammates on either defense or special teams. It's sad. All he needs is the football. You guys got one job. Just get, just make a stop. Or, in this situation, just need the damn ball in the end zone and give your quarterback a chance. And time and time again, Rodgers gets screwed out of possible game-winning drafts. And that's something that people just do not look further into. The reason why he doesn't have that many is because he doesn't get the opportunity. And you once again saw how he just got screwed again out of another opportunity. And it just show, and it just shows how badly coached and disciplined this football team is. These are paid these are paid professionals, and common sense seems to be lost in that f- that field with this team, constantly shooting themselves in the foot to lose these games. I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt in my mind, we would have went down that field and 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 and, 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 and even kicked the game with a field goal or a touchdown. No doubt in my mind. The Rodgers at our quarterback, I had no doubt. That we would win it down that field and, and hand the Rams their first loss this season. Because this game showed that the Packers can, can hang with anybody. Even the Rams. As, 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 as badly coached as we are and undisciplined a team we are, the Packers can still hang with any team in the NFL. And I have no doubt in my mind that Rodgers would have let us down that field for the game winning drive. I have no doubt in my mind. So even on the road, we barely lose to the fucking Rams. And we're losing in such an embarrassing and ridiculous way. So with that, the Packers will obviously lose another game on the road. We're now 0-3 on the fucking road. And the Packers playoff hopes are just dying now. They're dead. 
Next week game against the Patriots is a must win. And we want to save our season because the Bears, even though they fell into last place after that loss, next week they're right back in first place with the Vikings losing to the Saints and us losing. So the Bears are right back in first place in the division. And at this point, they had nothing but an easy road in their schedule. Look at the Bears' schedule. All those games were very winnable and easy games. Other than, other than the Packers and the Patriots, the, the Bears have not played any tough teams. So they've had this, so they've had they pretty much had chicken. Um they pretty much had a chicken roll in their schedule, pretty much. They're then yo, they, they haven't they had they've only played one division game that was against us. The same thing with the Vikings and Lions. Now those guys now those teams are eventually are start, are going are gonna start playing each other down the road now eventually. But compared to us and how our schedule has looked, it's not even close. But at the end of the day, we control our own destiny. And a team that was better that was better coached would not be making these type of mistakes. And that's why again I keep going back to Mike McCarthy because as as much as a fuck up that was by Ty Montgomery, look at the shit that Mike McCarthy was doing as well in this game. Third and two, what does he do? He passes the ball. Third and five, what does he do? He runs the ball. The final draft. Clock, poor clock management once again. Wasting the fucking time out. Not running the ball first and second down to kill some clock. And, and knowing the Rams only had one timeout. So I'm not letting Mike McCarthy off the hook. But I know most fans are going to because, because of Tom Montgomery's fumble. Tom Montgomery fumbling that ball took every single blame off Mike McCarthy, man. And Mike McCarthy once again escapes the electric chair. But before I get out of here, let me just go on some stats. Uh, Rodgers threw the ball 30 times, completed 13 for 286 yards and a touchdown. Devontae Adams caught five, five catches for 133 yards. A guy that's really slept on. Devontae Adams is having a really good year. But he's getting really slip, uh, slept on and falling under the radar. Uh, I think he definitely deserves more respect and attention from the media. The defense... Yeah, they eventually got gassed eventually, but I thought I had I thought a lot of guys a lot of guys on defense had some really good games. Jair Alexander had a really good game with five pass deflections. He he had a good game, man. He had a nice tackle on Tom Todd Gurley late in the game as well. Good to have him back on that football field. Kenny Clark had another solid game. He's definitely emerged as a uh, as a solid guy on on that defensive line. Mike Daniels did his thing. Blake Martinez was just all over the place. No question he's our best linebacker. These guys play well and, and deserve more love from the fans, man. But they just get over, they just get completely overshadowed and forget about because of overhype 52. And but to to but to Clay's credit, he did make a couple of plays in this game. But overall, those guys, the other guys that I mentioned, they deserve a lot more respect and attention and, and love from the fans. So that's all that's all I got, man. Like I said, next week game against the Patriots is a must win. And if we don't win that game, then you can kiss the, pretty much this season uh, goodbye. There's no way we're making the playoffs after that point. There's too many. It's too much. It's, this NFC is too wide. It's too deep. Excuse me. Too many talented football teams, and a, a team like the Packers cannot be be playing the way they are in hopes to make the playoffs, or even even possibly a Super Bowl championship. Because this is not a playoff team. This is definitely not a Super Bowl team. We're just too fucking dysfunctional of a football team. And can't and that a dysfunctional football team that can't win on the road, and every time you turn around, they're fucking shooting them own selves in the foot. But that's all I got. I know this is a long video. Peace.